Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for coming out. We really appreciate it. Uh, we wish we could stay around longer and enjoy your fine hospitality and weather, but uh, we still have a little work to do, and so we better get on back to Houston and get with it. Thank you. Hawaii's Governor Burns said aloha and goodbye to the astronauts. Each man had been given a box of Hawaiian fruit and each was given some orchids to take home to his wife. That trip in a C-141, which is a military cargo jet that travels almost as fast as a commercial passenger airliner, will take about seven hours, putting the astronauts on the ground at Ellington Air Force Base near Houston at about 2 a.m. Central Standard Time, perhaps a little earlier if the pilot catches a strong enough tailwind. En route, Borman, Lovell, and Anders will begin the debriefing process, as it's called. They'll be talking with Deke Slayton into a tape recorder about the mission that electrified the world, the mission of Apollo 8. When they step out of the plane at Houston, They'll be greeted, of course, by space agency officials, by some of their fellow astronauts, and by others who don't mind staying up late enough, late enough to catch a glimpse of America's newest heroes. On hand, too, will be the 14 persons they want most to see, their wives and their children. Tomorrow, the astronauts will have a day off. Then they'll spend more time telling the experts about every detail of flight than they actually spent making the flight itself. Perhaps then it will be all over for Borman, Lovell, and Anders. Perhaps they'll become elder statesmen of the space age, destined never to fly again, assigned to the mundane task of assisting others in preparations for manned landing flights, lunar landing flights. I'm sorry. You're going to have to um, pick it up, go back and pick it up. You came back to me on camera at a place where you told me you were not going to come back to me on camera. And I am all off. Do not take two. This is a CBS News special report. Hawaii greets the Apollo astronauts. Brought to you by Western Electric, manufacturing and supply unit of the Bell System, as part of their continuing coverage of important news events. Reporting to you from CBS News headquarters in New York, correspondent Steve Rowan. Good evening. The Apollo 8 astronauts, suffering nothing worse than the loss of a few pounds and the dry eyeballs Jim Lovell complained of and for which he's been given some eye drops, are en route home at this hour. The journey actually began yesterday, almost the minute they and their blackened spacecraft were aboard the aircraft carrier Yorktown. That ship, traveling at all the speed it can make, about 35 miles an hour, steamed north from the recovery zone for about 15 hours. Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Bill Anders spent a total of about seven hours of that time being examined by space agency doctors, who indicated that the men were as physically fit as if they'd taken nothing more than a brisk walk around the block rather than an extended trip around the moon. The astronauts had dinner in the wardroom, cutting the traditional cake. Lovell, the Navy captain, presided at the re-enlistment of several of the men who serve in Yorktown. This morning, it was breakfast with the ship's chief petty officers, who boast of having the best food aboard. And then, in an eight-passenger, twin-engine, Navy cod plane, the three were catapulted off the deck to make the final few hundred miles to Hickam Air Force Base near Honolulu. We'll show you highlights of that brief but exciting visit to Hawaii after this message. It was a warm, pleasant afternoon at Hickam Air Force Base in Hawaii and the crowd of perhaps 7,000 on hand to greet astronauts Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Bill Anders was a colorful one. Also on hand, CBS News correspondent Bill Stout. So after six days and more than half a million miles at speeds and distances no man ever before has even approached, 
The three astronauts make perhaps the most important leg of their journey homeward in this old, slow, and noisy propeller-driven aircraft called the COD for carrier onboard delivery. The COD that took them back from the carrier Yorktown, which fished them out of the Pacific yesterday. At the door in the orange shirt, Deke Slayton. He's shaking hands now with Frank Foreman, the commander of Apollo 8. There's Jim Lovell, and in back of him, Lieutenant Colonel, he was promoted today by order of the President, Lieutenant Colonel Bill Andrews, the youngest of the three astronauts, a rookie in space flight, as Walter Cronkite kept saying. Slayton now, Director of Astronaut Training, will make the trip back to Houston with these men. He's probably been closer to all three of them, closer in purely personal terms, than anyone connected with the manned spacecraft program. Foreman taking off his hat and waving. This is the receiving line. Governor John Burns of Hawaii, the first one, those three Honolulu hula girls, preceding even the governor. Next is Rachel Sullivan. She was an Olympic diving star for Hawaii in the recent games. That's Senator Hiram Fong. Lays being placed around their necks one at a time, with a traditional Hawaii sign of welcome, a kiss on the cheek. Foreman shaking hands now with Senator Daniel Inouye. That's Lieutenant General J.J. Navarro. Admiral J.J. Highland. Next to him, now shaking hands with Frank Foreman, Mayor Neil Blaisdell of Honolulu. And this is Lieutenant General T.E. Hutchin. He represents Admiral McCain, the Commander-in-Chief of the Pacific, who is currently in Vietnam. And last, Rear Admiral F.D. E. Bakudis, Commander of the Apollo Recovery Forces that swept the Pacific and did such an incredible job of all but blanketing the splashdown location these men finally arrived at yesterday. Governor Burns, Foreman, Deke Slayton, Lovell, coming up last, Bill Andrews. Ladies and gentlemen, my pleasure to introduce His Excellency John A. Burns, Governor of Hawaii. Thank you very much, Deke Slayton. Senator Fong, Senator Inoue, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my fellow citizens. Each of us here today has a rare opportunity to share in what is certain to rank as one of the proudest moments in Hawaii's history. We are indeed honored to welcome and to extend our warmest aloha to our three space pioneers as they step on Hawaiian soil in making their first contact with solid Earth since following their historic journey to the moon. <coughs> Needless to say, the entire world stands in admiration over their breathtaking achievement. <coughs> what they have done is a tribute to all who have contributed to our society's store of scientific and technological knowledge, as well as to the personal talents abilities and courage of the Apollo 8 crew. Their achievement, too, is a tribute to the human spirit which has driven man to ever greater heights of achievement and to fresh frontiers of conquest. <coughs> the Apollo 8 mission is an inspiration to each of us. Its success once again proves there is no limit to man's accomplishment, only to our imagination and to our vision. But this is a moment for each of the three astronauts to compile, comprise the Apollo 8 crew. It is my great pleasure, my high privilege, <coughs> to present to you, my fellow citizens, and to all people everywhere who can see this program throughout the world, the first men who have journeyed to the moon and back. Colonel Frank Foreman, United States Air Force. <laughs> Captain, United States Navy, James A. Lovell, Jr. And Lieutenant Colonel William A. Anders, United States Air Force. As of today. And now, Colonel...
Frank Borman. Thank you very much, Governor Burns. Uh, you know, just 16 years ago, I stopped here in Hawaii uh, as a second lieutenant going the other way, and I spent Christmas Eve here, and I didn't get near this reception. But I must say that even then, the people were warm and friendly, as I sure they am today. I I'm only sorry that we can't spend more than the 20 or 30 minutes that we have here be before we have to leave on our way back to Houston. And on behalf of all the thousands of people that really contributed to and participated in and made our flight possible, I'd like to thank all of you for being here today. And uh, all I can say is, I hope we can come back and visit you again soon. Thank you. Colonel James Lovell.